Dry. Don't repeat yourself. One of the most popular principles in software development. And in some cases, code generation is the best option to follow this principle. In the end of this video, you will have a simple blueprint to basically generate any kind of code for your project. Let's go. Here's a case that happened to me just recently. I saw the need to migrate my BDD style tests from some F# -sharp based internal DSL into a Gherkin language based approach. The background on this story you can read in the blog post linked in the description below the video. After some research, I decided for a project called TickSpec to execute a BDD scenario with this framework. A dedicated test fixture class per feature file is needed. Yes, this is F# -sharp, but don't worry, we will not write any F# -sharp code in this tutorial. As all the logic needed to load and execute such a scenario is factored out into a base class, the only purpose of the derived class is to define the name of the feature and to provide the feature file to the base class. Following the dry principle, maintaining these kind of redundant test fixture classes manually is not an option, which makes this case a perfect example for some simple code generation. Source generators seem to be quite an active topic these days. But unfortunately, this approach can currently only generate c -sharp code, so it doesn't work for my f -sharp example. And also, in this tutorial, I want to provide a blueprint which could basically generate any language. The simplest approach would be a handcrafted code generator using string operations and some text writer. An alternative which offers more flexibility and better maintainability would be to use some template engine. From some previous projects long ago, I remember T4 templates. So I did some research and found the project Mono Text Templating, which started out as an open source re implementation of the Visual Studio T4 Text Templating engine, but has since evolved to have many improvements over the original, including support for C -sharp 10 and .NET 6. So I decided to go for it. The Mono Text Templating project offers the .NET T4 command line tool. But in order to have more flexibility on the template engine later on, I decided to have my own console application, which integrates the template engine as a library. I have prepared this console application project already. Now let's add the mono text templating package. I experienced some issues with hosting the default package, so I went for the Roslyn version as suggested by the project documentation. Now let's integrate the template engine. We create an instance of the template generator and call process template async. We need to pass the template and the output file. As a result, we get a boolean value indicating whether the generation was successful or not. In case the generation failed, we want to return an exit code different than zero, and we also want to print the error messages to the console. Now let's get the template file and the output file from the command line arguments. Let's also add some diagnostic output. As the template will require the folder where all the feature files are located, let's pass this as a parameter as well. And with this, our simple code generator is ready. I intentionally kept the code as simple as possible for this tutorial. Of course, when we want to use this generator in some real project, some cleanup would be required, like input validation, error handling, and some usage output. Now let's create the template. I have already added the parameter we provide from the code generator. Please note that I had to add the attribute host specific equals true to make this parameter work. Now let's copy the code from the example derived class we have seen earlier and take it as a starting point for our template. Next, let's replace the name of the type as well as the concrete name of the feature file with some variable. Now let's add a loop to find all the feature files in the feature folder, give them as a parameter and extract the name of each file. Now let's also extract the title of each feature file so that we can use it as a type name. And now the first simple template is ready as well. Let's run the generator once on the command line to see that it really works. First let's delete all the code from the file we want to generate and then let's open a new terminal and run the generator. Ok, the generator finished successfully and as we can see on the screen, it exactly generated the code we expected. Awesome! The last missing piece of the puzzle is the integration of the code generator into the build process. The basic idea is to create a new MS build target, which integrates into the build process as before build step 
and which executes the code generator. We add the new target to a new file called directory build targets, which we place next to the Visual Studio solution file. This causes MS Build to pick it up automatically when loading any Visual Studio project from this source tree. Let's start by defining some properties we will need in a second. We also add a new item group which contains files we will need for the code generation. Let's add a condition to this item group so that these files are only included in those Visual Studio projects which are supposed to contain feature files. In my case, these Visual Studio projects end with .specs.fsproy. This item group will also contain a project reference to the code generator project so that this project gets recompiled when the code generator itself changes. Now we are ready to implement the target. We use the msbuild task exec to execute the code generator. Now let's also define inputs and outputs of the target as well as of the task to support incremental compile and cleanup of the generated files in case of a clean build. Okay, that's all what we need. Now let's change the feature file, build the project and see whether the integration in the build process works as expected. Let's change the title of the feature so that we can see the effect. Now let's build the project. We see that the code generator was executed, so let's inspect the generated file. And here we see the title of the type has changed. It works. And that's it. Now you have a simple blueprint to basically generate anything in your project. The code of this tutorial you can find on GitHub. The link is in the description below the video. See you in the next video.